And then we're going to move on to um, the notices and then the praise and worship. So we're going to stand. Praise God. We're going to stand. Praise God. So I'm going to ask Brother Ryan if you wouldn't mind opening us in prayer this morning. And then we'll just see how the Spirit will lead. Praise God. Amen. We glorify the Lord be lift up our hands in praise and all of his presence this morning we pray we thank you lord for allowing us to gather into your house one more time we thank you that you allow us to feast at your table one more time we pray lord that you take full control of this service we pray father you move like you've never moved before we pray touch every head not in this house in the name of jesus we pray Father, Lord, for, uh, for you to sweep over this, this house in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, you said that if we stick to your word and we believe in your word, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. Amen. And I pray, Lord, that you'll overflow in this house in the, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that we'll see your glory manifested in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, whatever you've spoken and prophesied over our lives will be manifested in the name of Jesus. Lord, those things that we've seen before, never heard before, but seen in the spirit, we pray, it's shall be realized in the mighty name of Jesus. Every dead thing, Lord, that has not produced, I decree and declare it shall be produced from this dead today and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare from Psalms 1 to 1, you said, you preserve our going out and our coming in Amen. from now and forevermore. Amen. And I decree and declare, Father, from today, Lord, we shall be whole in the name of Jesus. Whatever is meant for evil, shall you shall turn it around for our good in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare, Father, Lord, that this anointing that will drop in the house today Lord shall overflow this week Hallelujah. in the name of yes. Jesus yes. Lord things that we yes. see and yes. Lord even think yes. about shall be established yes. in the mighty name of Jesus yes. Yes. I decree Lord that you establish yes. Lord are the foot that steps that our feet shall tread shall be established in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I decree and declare Father Lord your guide and protect your people today in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for your word. Amen. And we glorify you this Amen. hour. We thank you for your presence Amen. this morning. Yes, we thank Lord. you for the moving of your spirit this morning. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for the things Lord. you're going to do. Things that we have not seen, no ear heard, nor yes. seen or seen or imagined in the heart. We thank you, Father, for your revelation this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Ryan. You know, we have come to his house to expect something. We must come with that expectancy. Sometimes we turn up because it's just Sunday. But when we come expecting a miracle, we expect to hear from God. You know, he said that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we come to seek God's face this morning. Praise the Lord. And thank Janice for being on the camera this morning. And praise God, she's coming up higher. You know, and sometimes you come out, you know, learning new things and doing new things. It can be a bit daunting, you know, as I'm still doing this secondment at work and I'm doing things that I never thought I would do. And it feels a little bit frightening when you're trying new things. But like with anything, the more you do something, the more practiced you become, the more confident and the more... Um, and the, and the better we get at doing it, the more often we do it. So just acknowledging you. Thank you, Janice. Um, <laughs> you've always been one for trying new things, and we appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Um, at this time, I'm just going to call upon Sister Betty, who is going to lead us this morning in our praise and worship. We've come to worship with her. It doesn't matter how many people's in this building. It's about the worship that comes from our hearts. And so we're going to make a joyful sound in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. I know when I was in the world, I used to make some noise when I used to go to them parties. And I used to, you know, fully enjoy myself. Now that I am saved, sanctified, and is redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I have even more reason to dance and shout in the house of the Lord. So we're just going to welcome Sister Betty right now, who's going to lead us. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Everything that have breath, praise the Lord, and we know everyone is alive in here, and we can <laughs> praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. We just give God the honor and the glory as he wake us up this morning and breathe another life into us and we come to give back that you know that praise and that worship that belongs to him he said he doesn't share his glory with anyone so every praise we know belongs unto god every praise is to our god every word of worship with one accord and as we come with one accord today to lift our voice in our hearts in praise to our holy holy and awesome god hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord praise
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty warrior, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, hallelujah. You're great in battle, but 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 you're great. No. Oh. 
week we can find strength in Him. He is our strength. No matter what we are going through, we can find strength in our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Continue to praise His name. Hallelujah. The sunrise says, You are my strength. Hallelujah. The strength like no other reaches to me. That song gave me, just brought my mind back while we were singing it. And it reminded me when I was about to be made homeless and I was being evicted out of my home. I didn't know how I was going to get out of this home and what I was going to do. And God turned up and he showed himself mighty, mighty. All the fears that I had were just blown the water when God was moving on my behalf. I can truly associate with the words of that song. He is our hope and he is our strength no matter what you're going through. Sometimes we forget of the, the exploits that God has already done and I was reminded about it. I was um, talking with my sister yesterday on the phone and we were, I don't know how we got to talking about how when she also was going to be made homeless that she um, she was worried about where she was going to stay and she had to clean the house that she had to live and all the issues but because I knew the God that had taken me out of my own home I had just this boldness I just had this hope I said to don't worry about it God's got it I said what he's done for me he can do for you sometimes what you're going through is not necessarily just for you it's for you to pour it to somebody else and to encourage somebody else and sure enough he took her out of where she was and he planted her in a brand new build a new house a new garden water butt shed blinds in the window and I was said to my God I said God you sure you gave it to the right sister I was so shocked because she's not a garden person I looked at her garden and I had a bit of garden envy and I said God is amazing 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 praise God Hallelujah. We're going to have um, the morning scripture reading. I think it's just one verse. No? Is it the whole? Oh, 1 to 16. I apologize. So if you've got your Bibles, please turn to Matthew, Matthew 20. I can't even read my own Bible. Matthew 20, sorry, 1 to 16. Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16. One we've read before many times is the parable of the workers in the vineyard and if you found it if you're able to stand for the reading of God's word it says for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day he sent them into his vineyard and he went about the third hour, and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. Again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle. And he said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, am I doing you no wrong? Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I 
wish to give to this last man the same as to you? Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Praise the Lord, praise God. We know his word is blessed, but we're going to honor them by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise God. At this time, I'm just going to hand over to Pastor Peter, who's going to be giving us the message. Praise. Let's give God a praise. Come, let's give God a praise. Come, let's give God a praise. Greet everyone in the wonderful name of Jesus, our soon coming King. Um, I thank God that I can be in his house again to give him the glory and to give him the praise because he is worthy of all glory and he is worthy of all praise. Amen. He is worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down the same. Amen. And one thing I know is that I can trust God and I can depend on him. And he never lets me down. Amen. amen. Sometimes when people let you down, amen, you know that he is not going to let you down. You know that he is someone who you can trust. Amen. Uh, someone said he's closer than a brother because sometimes you can have a brother or a sister who let you down, but he won't um, let you down. Amen. If I was to give a theme for my sermon today, Amen. It would be amazing grace. Yes, yes. Now you have just um, heard the scripture read and you might think, what's that got to do with grace? Um, well, I'm going to let you in on a secret and by the end of this word, you'll understand more about what grace is about. The first verse that was read from um, St. Matthew um, 20 said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. I want you to take note of that. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. So let's have a look and see what actually took place. So it says, now when he went out, and you can see that in verse two, it says, when he went out, he saw some laborers and he agreed. I want you to make note of that word, agreed. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day. In other words, uh, just like how if you go to a job and they say, I'm going to pay you 25,000 pounds and you agree to accept that 25,000 pounds to do the job. So these people who he saw early in the morning, he had a contract with them and they agreed to work for the day for this denarium. Now the Bible says that he then went out the third hour of the day and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So now he sees that I've got this big vineyard. The Bible often tells us that the harvest is plentiful but the labors are few. And so those who he hired in the morning, he realized that this vineyard is still big. There's still plenty of work. I still need more workers. And so at the third hour when he went out, he saw some people were standing idle in the marketplace. <coughs> now it could be that when he went out in the morning, they were still in their bed. And so they weren't there. And so they missed the hiring. But he came back at the third hour. Amen. And they were there sitting idle. And he said to them, verse 4, you also go into in the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give these. So they went. Now watch this. Yeah. Those who came, he, who he saw at the third hour, mm -hmm. he didn't promise them a denarii. He said, whatever is right, I will pay you. Yeah. So they don't know how much they're going to get. Now the first lot of people, they were told that you're going to get a denarii. Now those who came at the, 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 the third hour, he says, 
whatever is right, I will pay you. So they have agreed to work, but they don't know what they're going to get. And so you could say that maybe they've gone out and worked by faith that he is going to reward them according to their labor. So they go out, and so again the Bible says in verse 5, Again he went out at the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. So those who, amen, uh, 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 came at the sixth and the ninth hour, they were given the same terms that I will pay you whatever is right. Now the Bible says, because in their days they have 12 hours in their, what they call their daytime. So you have the third hour of the day, you have the sixth hour, you have the ninth hour, and then you have the twelfth hour, so that the day was 12 hours. And so here it is that the day is 12 hours and the hours, and he goes out at the eleventh hour. So just imagine now, those who he's recruiting at the eleventh hour, they only have one hour to work. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says in verse 6, and about the eleventh hour he went out and find others standing idle. And he said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. Now it would look as if to say that maybe those ones came out late and so amen they said no one would hire us well maybe if you know when i used to do temporary work and we used to go to an agency in the morning we had to get up early in the morning and go to the agency because guess what the work that came in those who came first would be sent out on the jobs um, in the days when i used to do manual work and i used to work up by earl's court and so if you didn't if you don't get up early in the morning and go there by the time you got there if you kept turned up at 11 o'clock in, in in the morning amen there's no work for you they're already gone because they would send you out to the the, the factories and various different places and they start early in the morning so by seven o'clock we had to be at the agency and so if you came late amen by the time you come there's no more work left for you they're already gone and so yet this person comes out and at the 11th hour he sees these people there and he says, those who came in, you hired about the 11th hour, they each, let's go back. So he, at the 11th hour, he goes back out, and uh, verse 6, about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, why have you been standing here idle? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. Verse 8 says, so when the evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his children, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. You'd have thought that maybe those who came first would have got their wages first. But actually, he gave the ones who came last their wages first. Now watch this in verse 9. He says, and when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarii. Take note of that, the ones who came at the beginning of the day, in the first hour, they were promised a denaria for the whole day. But the Bible says here that the ones who came at the eleventh hour, they received a denaria. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denaria. So those who came first, because he paid the last ones first, and he gave them a denaria. They thought, well, you know something, because we come early, we're going to get a lot more. <coughs> but what they didn't realize, the ones who came in the first hour, they had agreed for the denaria. That's what they agreed. The ones who came at the third hour and afterwards, they were just promised, whatever is right, I will pay you. But here they find that he pays everybody the same. Regardless of what time they came. Now, the Bible says that, um, they, the Bible says in verse 7, but when the first came, they supposed they would have received more, and they likewise received each a denarius. Verse 11, and when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, these men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give 
I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. It is not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things, or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be the first, and the first the last, for many are called, but few are chosen. This particular scripture was emphasizing God's grace. And before I get into that and to, to give you the crux of what I'm trying to say, is that God was trying to emphasize his grace. And I'm going to give you an example so you understand what grace is about. There was a story of a mayor of New, New, New York. Uh, back in the, 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 um, uh, the, in the in the 1930s, let me just read this. It says, a story is told about uh, Fiorella Lagardia, who was the mayor of New York City, which was during the worst days of the Great Depression, Depression and all of the World War II. Was called by many New Yorkers the little flower because he was only five foot four and always wore a carnation on his lapel. He was a colorful character who used to ride the New York City fire trucks, raid the, the, raid the speakeasies, that's an American term for an illicit liquor shop or drinking club. Because back in those days they used to have what they called prohibition when they weren't allowed to drink um, mm -hmm. alcohol. And with the police department, he would, take, he would take entire orphanages to baseball games and whenever the New York newspapers were on strike, he would go on the radio and read the Sunday funnies to the kids. One bitterly cold night in January 1935, the mayor turned up at a night court in an area that served the poorest ward in the city. La Guardia had dismissed the judge for the evening and took over the bench himself. Within a few minutes, a tattered old woman was brought before him, charged with stealing a loaf of bread. She told La Guardia that her daughter's husband had deserted her, her daughter was sick, and her two grandchildren were starving. But the shopkeeper from whom the bread was stolen refused to drop the charges. It's a real bad neighborhood, your honor, the shopkeeper told the mayor. She's got to be punished to teach others around here a lesson. La Guardia sighed. He turned to the woman and said, I've got to punish you. The law makes no exceptions, $10 or 10 days in jail. But even as he pronounced the sentence, the mayor was already reaching into his pocket. He extracted a bill and tossed it into his hat saying, here is the $10 fine, which I now remit. And furthermore, I'm going to fine everyone in this courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a person has to steal bread so that their grandchildren can eat. <laughs> Mr. Bailiff, collect the fines and give them to defendant. <laughs> the following day, the New York City newspapers reported that $47.50 um, was turned over to the bewildered old lady who had stolen a loaf of bread to feed her starving grandchildren. 50 cents of that amount being contributed by the red face grocery store owner. Here's the question. Did the elderly lady in the story get what she deserved? Clearly the answer is of course not. She had stolen a loaf of bread. Yes, you might have a reason, but stealing is stealing and regardless of the reason, punishment would seem to be the order of the day. What I'm trying to say to you was that the judge showed her grace. Grace is when one in superior power shows kindness or mercy to one in a lesser position. Male a guardia, rather than demanding punishment of the woman himself, he paid the fine on her behalf. That's what grace is about. Grace is not that we deserve it. Grace is something that has been given to us. And so this parable was about grace. Because what Jesus was trying to demonstrate was that the kingdom of God, he said it was like a landowner going out. And what he was emphasizing here was that the people who came at the start, in other words, people like us who have been saved for a long time, we have been promised heaven. 
Now, if somebody gets here, saved 10 years after we do, guess what? They still promise the same heaven. And if somebody who gets saved one hour before they die, they still promise the same heaven. Amen. And so we might be saying to ourselves, well, you know something, I should get a different place because I've been saved a lot longer. And so therefore, I deserve, amen, a bigger heaven than you. And maybe uh, uh, my mansion in heaven should be much bigger because I've been serving God for 40 years. I've been serving God for 50 years, but you have only been serving him for two years, amen, or maybe for one hour. So therefore, amen, I deserve Deserve a better heaven than you what Jesus was trying to let us know was that guess what we all will receive the same heaven regardless of whether we were saved early or late and that's what Jesus was trying to emphasize that it wasn't about what was fair in other words this is not about fairness in other words it's about God's grace in other words that woman who stole the bread amen and the law says that you should be punished either you pay the ten dollar fine or you spend ten days in jail but the judge who was the mayor at the time decided I'm going to give you some grace in other words you don't deserve this but I'm going to give you favor that is what God gives us we didn't deserve it yeah, we, yeah. there was no reason why we should yeah. have it yeah. but he gave us grace yeah. some of us were so uh, miserable some of us were so uh, disgusting yeah. amen in our behavior and how how we were but yet God allowed us time to change God allowed us time to turn our lives around even after we got saved and we still messed up and we still did wrong God still gave us time this is what grace is about it's not, not about fairness it's yes. about God giving us an opportunity yes there was a story about this woman a woman who she'd grown up and when she was a child she had been abused by her father and later on she became a Christian and she was worshipping and then some years even after she'd been saved and her dad got quite old she got a message from him to say that he had become a Christian instead of being happy she was very unhappy because she was saying to herself he deserves to be punished and surely he can't be going to the same heaven that I'm going to yeah, yeah. and so she was disappointed amen because she felt that uh, uh, he should not uh, uh, enter the kingdom of God he should not be there because he should pay for what he did yes but then she had a vision and she realized that Jesus had forgiven her for things that she had done wrong for th and entered into the family of God she realized that she had to forgive him also because sometimes we don't want certain people to be saved because we want them to be punished we want them to be in hell and burn in hell fire because we feel that they don't deserve to go into the same place where we go <clears throat> but this is all about God's grace we sing this song, God's grace and mercy saw me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. God's grace and mercy brought me through. And yet we sing that song and yet often we don't want God's grace and mercy to apply to somebody else, only to ourselves. But what I want to say to you today is this none of us deserve God's grace and if we look into our life there's loads of things that we have done that we didn't deserve God's grace we have messed up many times we have been disobedient many times we haven't done what God has told us to do yet his grace when we have come back to him and said to him God I am sorry I didn't mean to do this he has forgiven us and so in the text that we read today what it was about was that God was trying to ex emphasize to them that it doesn't matter at what stage that you give your heart to the Lord guess what you will still get the same heaven that everyone else gets it's like when you take an exam 
It doesn't matter if you pass the pass mark by 1%, you still pass. Yeah. <laughs> and so some might have got 90%. Yeah, maybe if the pass mark was, I don't know, 60 and you got 61, you still pass. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far you pass, you still pass, you still can go and show your certificate and say, I've got my degree. Whether or not, amen, it was only 1%, nobody's going to turn around and say, oh, it was 1% below the limit. Because I remember one time when I was taking my professional exams, and the pass mark was 50, and I got 49, and they said, written, fail on it. And I said, you mean to tell me that I got 49, you couldn't even, even give me, some people put in a date on there, give me that one mark to bring it up to the 50. How could you fail me on 49? And so I was vexed. If I had got 20% or 30%, but I was just one mark from the past mark, and I thought to myself, I got to go and take this exam again, do all this studying again, just for one mark. And so I realized, amen, so when I passed, I didn't care whether it was one mark over because I said, you failed me when I was just one behind. And so sometimes we, we think to ourselves, well, you know, so all we have to do is get into heaven. That's all we have to do. And so the, the parable was about those who came late. Imagine that one who only worked for one hour. <clears throat> and the Bible said the rest of them complained and said, we have been in the heat of the day. We have been in the heat of the day. But we serve a God that is so gracious that even when you come late, he still opens the doors of heaven and let you in. It's not what about it's, it's not about what is fair. It's called grace. It's called grace. It's called grace. Guess what? If there's a number of cr criminals before a judge, and maybe some of them, amen, uh, 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 were murderers. Maybe some of them were thief. Guess what? If he applies grace to all of them, it doesn't matter what they did. They get the same grace. They get let off. And so, amen, grace is about giving us a, a, a favor that we didn't deserve. And that's what God does. He's saying, I'm about grace. I'm going to give you favors that you didn't earn. Favors that somebody will look at and say, this is not fair. The favor of God is not fair. It's called grace. In other words, you didn't do nothing to deserve it. If, if God had treated you how you deserve, you wouldn't get nothing. Maybe some of us would be dead because he'd kill us. But what God is saying here is that I have given you favor. And everyone who comes to me, regardless of what time you got saved, it could be that those workers, I can imagine why some of those workers are vexed because they probably thought, you know, something. I've got out my bed. And I've gone down to the marketplace to look for work. Got up early. Went to my bed early. I didn't lie down in my bed. And, you know, like some youngsters nowadays, they lie down in bed and just get up in the afternoon. <laughs> and so these workers have thought to himself, you know something, I got up early. And I went there. And these ones now just get up in, in midday. And, and get up when they crawl out of bed and now they're coming. And you tell me that you pay them the same. This is not fair. Let me tell you something, grace is not fair. There are many people who have spent all their life in church. As you saw that video the other week, that minister who said, I went to theology college. I got all my degrees in theology. I preached many people into the kingdom. And yet I'm outside. Because the apostle Paul said, I have to take heed to myself. Least I preach others into the kingdom and I'd be a castaway. You could be a theologian with all the doctorates and whatever it is and you could preach other people in the kingdom and you stay outside. Why? Because they listen to the words of God and they apply it to their life but you didn't apply it yeah. to your life. Mm. We can see all the turmoil in the government today because they made laws which they said was to safeguard us during the pandemic while they themselves did not obey it. They themselves did not do it. And that's why you can have a situation where people say things that is good for you and is good for everybody, but they did not apply it to themselves. And so they end up being cast out. It's not what you say. It's what you do and how you live your life. There are many people who have the knowledge 
and they can teach and they can preach but guess what they don't live anything that they teach and preach and that's why the Bible says many shall come and say, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Did I not do this in your name? But he says, he's going to say to them, depart from me, you workers yes. of iniquity. Yes, yes. In other words, they only talked about it, but they didn't live it. Yeah. They didn't do it. Yeah. We're going to come, go into a time of prayer. <clears throat> and we want to understand something, that everything that we are is because of God's grace. Amen. Because God gave us a second chance. And when we're thinking that, oh, I'm not going to give this person a chance. I'm not going to give that person a chance. We've got to remember that God gave us a second chance. When we came back to him and we said, Lord, I'm sorry. Guess what? He forgave us. And he gave us a second chance. That's what you call God's grace. And for everybody who comes before God and say, God, you know something? I'm sorry of my sin. I repent. I acknowledge you. I take you to be my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Even if they came at the 11th hour, God will still recognize them. Let us stand to our feet. Yeah. Let us stand to our feet. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And when we pray, after we've prayed, we're going to have a time where it's just quiet and still. Sometimes we talk to somebody, and guess what? We keep on talking, but we never give them a chance to respond, because we are always talking. And if you're having a telephone conversation with somebody, Surely there must be a point where you stop talking so they can say something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what we do is we talk all the time and we never stop to hear God speak to us. I remember the times when I came here and I was on fasting and I laid at the altar. And I didn't talk a lot. But I just meditated. And those were the times when God spoke to me and gave me visions. Sometimes we just need to be in his presence before him, quiet and let him speak. Because sometimes we do all the speaking, but we never ever find out what the other person at the end had to say to us because we never gave them a chance. We said all we had to say and as soon as we finished saying we put the phone down and we're gone. And so God never got an opportunity to even say anything to us. So we're going to pray. And then we're going to have a time of meditation where we, 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 we begin to meditate. And, and we say hallelujah, but we're meditating and we're waiting for God to, to say something to us. Sometimes we need to have that all throughout our home. We don't always, we sometimes we think that when we pray, we always have to be saying something. Yeah. We don't always have to be saying something. Sometimes we just need a little bit of time for God to say something to us. And so let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that we can be in your house again today. We give you the thanks. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Because you are our almighty God. And Lord, as we've come today to offer up our praise. Lord, we thank you for what, we, what you have done for us. We thank you for what you're about to do. Lord, and we present all those things, Lord, that we are working on. God, we pray, present them before you, God, that your will be done, not our will, but your will be done. And someone said, thy will, thy will, thy will be done. Lord, teach me from my heart to say, thy will be done. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that everything in our life, Lord, we would seek to have your will done in our lives. God, not our will, but your will. Help us to realize, Lord, and help us to be humble and realize that it's your grace and mercy that has brought us through. It's your grace and mercy why we are who we are today. It's not because we all that on a bag of chips. Lord, it's because of your grace. 
grace and your mercies. Lord, you could have cut us off at any time you chose. You could have cut us off in our sin, but you have given us time to repent, uh, Lord, and to be what you have called us to you to be. It's called your grace. And so we thank you for your grace. We thank you for God that for you are who you are. Lord, and we thank you, God, that Lord, when we did, did when we deserve is deserve punishment. God, you, you paid the charge on our behalf. That's why you came and you died on the cross. You paid the price for us that we would be set free. And so God, you said, who the Son set free, he is free indeed. And if you set us free, let us not take up the yoke of bondage and be entangled and be bound up. And so we thank you today and we give you all the glory. God, and as we come before you, Lord, we want to hear you speak to us. We want to hear you talk to us. Lord, we just don't want to do all the talking and then we just hang up. But God, we want to hear you say something to us. And so we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a time where we just meditate. If you want to hold your hands up, you can hold your hands up. If you want to hold your hands and your waist and hold up, you can do that. When people put their hands up, it was a sign of, of surrender. I surrender. Oh. And so we have a time of meditation and allow God to speak to us. speaking to you. Give him an amen.
Joshua 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's telling us that we need to meditate on the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then it says that we shall be prosperous mm -hmm. and that we shall have good success. Mm -hmm. Meditate means to be silent and focus your mind. And when we are silent before God and focus our mind on Him, He says we will have, we will be prosperous and have good success. When we are at home, take some time just to be in His presence. You don't have to do a lot of talking. All you have to do is meditate on His Word. Meditate. Those who meditate on the words of the Lord, they shall have good success. Sometimes we think success is by our much speaking. But there's a time when we need to be silent before God and let Him speak to us. called you to do meditate on it day and night it will begin to form part of you before you know it God will speak to you and you'll see the things come into pass because you meditate on it day and night up and they're meditating and they're focusing so that when they go through their day whatever troubles and trials they go through they can make it if you get up in the morning even if it's just 10 minutes that you spend find a quiet place go before God and meditate and say God I want you to take care of my day and they just sit there silently and focus on God. I guarantee you he will take you through that day, whatever storms that may come that day. If you want to have good success, if you want to be prosperous, it says you must meditate day and night. Your grace and mercy brought me through a living
because we deserve it it's because you have extended grace to us Lord and so God you're not going to hold it against us that we didn't do something that we should have done in the past because your grace is here for us and so we thank you for your grace Lord and for every need for every request for everyone that is sick Lord we might not have deserved our healing maybe we did some things that contributed towards our sickness Lord, and so what is fair is that we should have taken the consequences of what we did. But God, because of your grace, it's not because of fairness, it's not because we deserve it, but it's because you desire to give us favour. 
and so we thank you for your grace and so for everyone who has their need and has their issue and their problem that needs solving I pray God in the name of Jesus that you will solve it I pray God that we will not become envious like those in the vineyard who came early and they said well we should have got more because why did we get the same as them because we have taken the heat of the day but every single one was given the same promise and we are living this life because we want to make heaven our home and so everyone who come whether they come late in the day or early in the day the still goal is to make heaven our home because we don't know when you're putting up your appearance we might say well I'm gonna be like this other person I'm gonna wait till the last minute but guess what you might just suddenly take us during the night while we're sleeping yeah we might be walking on the road and a car knock us down we might not get that the second opportunity we might just suddenly cut off and so wherever we stop that's where the chips lie and so father god i pray in the name of jesus that we will not be saying well you know something i'm going to wait till the last minute we might not be able to make it at the last minute because it could be that you just take us suddenly many people have died suddenly of a heart attack they got up that morning and they believed that there was every reason that they would see the end of the day but they didn't make it to the end of the day so help us god to serve you while we can and give you the glory and to give you the praise and we thank you for meeting those needs as we give you the glory and let the church say amen amen amen, amen. amen. this time we're going to take the um tithes and offering and we're going to welcome sister betty back on call and release the number to sounds excellent jesus excellent you're excellent in all if the people don't want to praise you you're still excellent excellent jesus excellent you're excellent in all the earth excellent jesus excellent you're Jesus, excellent, you're excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, you're excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, you're excellent in all the earth. Oh, excellent Jesus, excellent, you're excellent in all the earth. Excellent. 
Jesus, excellent, you're excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, you're excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, you're excellent in all the earth. One more time. And if the people don't But he's still excellent this yes. time. Hallelujah. We are praising God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to call on Deacon James to bless the tithes and the offering for us. Please. Amen. Amen. And we are your footstool, and as we come before you today, it's another day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Again, we thank you for your blessing, Lord, that you have blessed us that we could bring an offering, O oh, Heavenly Father. We pray today that not only an offering, but we bring ourselves as an offering, as a sacrifice Amen. before you today. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that we bless it, breathe upon it. Oh, God, I pray that we multiply it with a miracle working God. Hallelujah. We pray today, Lord, that we bless it and that we receive a blessing as we come in your house. Because we come for a blessing, Heavenly Father. Again, we give you thanks for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 